Uh, hello everyone, we're from small group discussion B10 and today we're going to present to you uh, our student project uh, of this block, which is the amino acid metabolism disorder. Uh, before I start the presentation, may I introduce myself? Uh, my name is Igustin Ratata Arite Awarnam with the student number of 200251215. And my name is Ida Bagus Gidegranamas Manuaba with a student number of 200251210. My name is Dewa Ibintang Urwatasari with a student number of 200251211. My name is Madiay Kurnia Tiatmaja with a student number of 200251216. My name is Bagus Agung Suputra Renugraha with student number 200251121. My name is Nimputri Namaharani with student number 200251220. Hello, my name is Putu Sharita Hindi Pratiwi with the student number of 200251121. My name is Natasha Repusparani with a student number of 200251127. Hi, my name is Joshua Francisco Sofian with the student number of 200251122229. Hello, my name is Krisan Aldram Dracho with student with student number of 200251230. Hello, my name is Timothy Julian Matulatan and my student number is 200251233. Hello, my name is Ardelia Clara Budiman, and my student number is 200251234. Hello, my name is Amanda Raisa Suryananda with a student number of 200251237. So I'm going to explain a little bit about amino acid. Amino acids are structural protein units which play a big role for the body and used as a source of energy for the cell to repair and develop especially for cell and body growth. Each amino acid consists of a carboxylic acid, amino functional group, and a unique carbon structure. Protein can be dissected into 20 different amino acids for the purpose of absorption. Out of 20, there are nine essential proteins, which are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, met thionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. The rest are categorized as non-essential amino acid. Next. So generally, the term of metabolism is usually defined as the breakdown process of food and how its components are made into energy sources through a various chemical reaction sequences that may be assisted by a large numbers of enzymes. Next. So there are several examples of amino acid metabolism disorders, such as, next. So the first one is phenylketonuria. The second one is terosinemia. The third one is homocystonuria. And the fourth one is maple syrup urine disease, or what you can call is MSUD. And further explained uh, by my friends. Now we're going to dig deep on the first uh, disease, uh, which is the phenylketonuria, or uh, what I would refer to in the future as PKU for simplicity reasons. Next. Uh, first of the epidemiology, uh, phenylketonuria is caused by congenital e uh, defects in the phenylalanine metabolism. This disease has the possibility of causing irreversible nerve damage. However, early detections can reduce the severity of the illness. Recent, recent, recent research determines the prevalence of phenylketonuria by using the data of neonatal screening, the result of a total of 53 studies which was conducted in 1964 to 2017 shows that Turkey has the highest prevalence per 100,000 neonates. In contrast, on the other hand, uh, Thailand shows the lowest prevalence, uh, which is 0 0.3. Uh, next up is the, path, uh, the risk factor, uh, I'm sorry. The pathogenesis. Uh, PKU was identified by uh, the founding of elevated phenyl ketones in the urine of two siblings in 1934 by Asbjorn Falling. The toxicity mechanism of phenylalanine is not completely perceived. Treatment by a phenylalanine restricted diet was first depicted by Horst Bickel in 1953, and early constant treatment seems to forestall the intellectual inability. 
Uh, next up is the risk factors. Uh, mutation in the gene which codes the phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme or PAH causes the PKU. It causes the PKU. This gene is located on the long arm of the chromosome 12, specifically in the band of region Q22 to Q24.1. Moreover, these are more than 800 disorders which may cause mutation in the PAH. Next. So, so, okay, so today I'm going to explain the differential diagnosis, diagnosis, complications, and prognosis of phenylketonuria. PKU was first discovered through subsequent nation, national blood screening process. process. Uh, physician concerned with the diagnosis, management, and care of the patients with phenylalanine are acutely aware of their inability to differentiate all patients who require restrictive dietary therapy from those who do not, what, do not. One common method of differentiating the phenylalanines is throughout the measuring of bloods, uh, bloods response as a patient's digest natural protein diets with standard PHA content. Uh, the next one is the complications. PKU is a is a disease which is impairs the body ability the body ability to metabolize the phenylalanin. High concentration of blood in phenylalanin is toxic to the nervous systems and can cause several neurologic complications, behavioral complications, the intellectual disabilities such as increase in level of anxiety, depressions, and impairments in executive executive functions. Through the help of therapy. These symptoms are more likely to be reduced. The last one is the prognosis. PKU usually affect newborns. The outcomes depends on how early the perineal ketonuria disease was diagnosed. It's, it also depends on the mother's conditions during pregnancy. Mothers who follow the low pelelanin diets show better results for the babies. The best prognosis is ob obtained when the disorders can be identified within the first few days after birth and given a diet before three weeks old. In addition, with lifelong treatments, the most of people with lectonuria disease can live healthier. And now I'll explain about tyrosinemia disease. Next. Tyrosinemia is a disease caused by the lack of humoralized cytoestate hydrolyzed enzyme. Tyrosinemia has been estimated to infect 1 in 100,000 to 120,000 birds worldwide. The diagnosis can be done in a program with standard biochemical findings and or through molecular genetic testing to determine biallelic pathogenic variants in FAH. There have been approximately 35 mutations described for tyrosinemia type 1. Carrier testing for any relatives who may be at risk or conducting prenatal diagnosis for pregnancies at increased risk are necessary if both pathogenic variants are known within the family line. An untreated hereditary tyrosinemia quickly declines into extremely serious liver complexities regularly bringing to liver cancer. Next. Uh, the next one is... The first, I'm going to present the differential diagnosis. Uh, the liver dysfunction that causes serum transaminase to rise, decreased coagulation factor, reduction in albumin and cholinesterase, and increase in alpha fetoprotein is also a characteristic marker of tyrosinemia type 1. This makes liver dysfunction can be diagnosed as tyrosinemia type 1. Next, complication for tyrosinemia type 1 or neurological complication which manifests through painful episode of affecting extremity and or abdominal function, accompanied by hypertension and hypotemia. Hyponatremia may present at any time and may result in respiratory failure and death. Last but not least, the prognosis. In babies with tyrosinemia type 1 disorder, experience weight loss because of their poor food tolerance. The disease also can lead to kidney or liver failure increased possibility of liver cancer, and it also negatively affects with the bone. Next. So the next disease is homocysteinuria. Next. A mutation in the cystathionine beta synthase gene, or CBS, is the leading cause of classical homocysteinuria. 
The prevalence rate of the disorder is about 1 in 100,000 to 200,000 people in the United States. Homocystinuria exhibit autosomal recessive inheritance. Affected patients vary widely in the extent to which they manifest clinical abnormalities, suggesting considerable genetic heterogeneity. Homocystinuria, which is also known as HCU, could be diagnosed by the raising number methionine, FHCY, and TSCY, and low plasma cysteine and cysteine that being shown from the analysis of quantitative amino acid in plasma. It also can be diagnosed by urine analysis by quantification of methionine, homocysteine, cysteine, methyl, methyl malonate, orotate, uracil, and creatinine. Next. Homocysteinuria types 1, 2, and 3 are characterized by different etiologies, by chemical abnormalities, and therapeutic measures. A rapid and simple procedure for establishing a differential diagnosis of the three types of homocysteinuria by analyzing the urine of patients. The most serious complication of homocysteinuria is blood clots, which can be life-threatening and increase the stroke risks. Cognitive disability is also a possibility. Diet or consumption with lower levels of homocysteine in the blood can prevent the symptoms. However, regular blood clot checkups are required. Oxidative stress is one of the pathogenesis of homocysteinuria. Some studies indicated that enzymatic and non-enzymatic cell reinforcement protections are diminished in people influenced by this illness. Next. Okay, so the fourth disorder that I will explain about is the maple syrup urine disease or MSUD. Next. MSUD is an inborn error of metabolism that is caused by defects in the branch chain alpha ketoacid acid dehydrogenase complex or the BCKAD enzyme complex, which results in elevations of the branch chain amino acids in plasma, alpha ketoacids acids in urine, and production of pathognomonic disease marker or alloisoleucine. It is a rare metabolic disorder with a prevalence of one in every 185,000 live births, and in certain populations, maybe one in every 52,541 newborns. It is an autosomal recessive disorder where both parents of an individual with MSUD are most often unaffected, unaffected carriers of the condition. When two carrier parents with mutation in the same gene reproduce, there is a 25% chance that any child will have MSUD. Increased branch chain amino acid or BCAA levels inside the body due to pathogenic deformities in certain segments would cause MSUD. MSUD can be diagnosed by mass spectrometry. It can detect elevated plasma leucine, l allo isoleucine, and isoleucine through extended screening programs in newborns. Screening is usually done when an infant is around five days old, and approximately by then, they would show several symptoms. Next. All right. So I'm now going to talk about the different diagnosis, differential diagnosis of the MSUD. Likewise, to the diagnosis of the MSUD. It also requires the examination of the alloisoleucine plasma concentration. As we can see here, there are many complications to the MSUD, such as weight loss, anemia, diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and etc. Of course, these are very harmful, and it's our uh, and then that therefore it's our but we must do our best to keep them out. How do we do it? Uh, certain diets have been shown to work, and Stress avoidance has also shown positive results. Next. Now, moving on to the etiology of the amino acid metabolism disorders. First of all, I'm going to talk about the hereditary. And then second of all, I'm going to talk about the body's level of the phenylalanine. The first one is hereditary. Amino acid metabolism disorders could occur due to heredity. These hereditary disorders are caused by the defective genes that are passed from the parents to their children. Commonly, the hereditary amino acid metabolism disorders need two copies of abnormal genes. However, these disorders have higher chances of developing in men rather than in women because a copy of abnormal genes could trigger the changes necessary to develop disorder. Moving on to the second one is about the the body's level of the phenylalanine. 
Channel Keto Nuria, or we can just say it as PKU, is one of the amino acid metabolism disorders. It is genetically caused disorders which increase the body's level of the phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is one of the integral components of proteins. Although the phenylalanine is important, people don't need it too much in their bodies. Therefore, the body converts excess phenylalanine into amino acids called the tyrosine. But the PKU stops the body's ability to break down the excess of phenylalanine into tyrosine. If, le- if this kind of thing left untreated, the excess of phenylalanine will build up in the person's blood and urine, and these builds up are harmful for the body. So next is prevention. Since amino acids metabolism is an inherited disease, it's almost impossible to prevent it from happening. But we, what we can do is lower the risk of them getting it. So first, avoid harmful environment factors which increase mutation frequencies. Second, do new, newborn screening. Through that program, we can prevent the disease to develop, and if the child does have this, this kind of disease, they can get their child to do a treatment as soon as possible to prevent serious complications. And then last but not least, early detection of couples at risk. Like I said, there is no way to prevent it, but they can lower the risk by testing both of the parents and see which, which one of them carries the gene. After testing, you could consult to a doctor and determine your risk as well as your baby. Next. Okay, so I want to sum up all of the explanation into four core point conclusion. Amino acid metabolism disorder is an inherited type of disorder that is passed from parent to child through genes that affect body metabolism. This disorder gives people a condition of being unable to break down or change a certain amino acid. There are several disorders in the amino acid metabolism such as PKU, MSUD, HCU, tyrosinemia, and etc. This disorder occurs in three key phases in the amino acid metabolism, which are the body's inability to break down amino acid, body's inability to detoxify the toxic product of amino acid metabolism, and the excessive accumulation of the amino acid metabolism product. So how to prevent this disease? The main prevention method of this disorder are screening process and having precaution toward the disease by routine check on offspring because most of these diseases are inherited through their parents' genes. If the offspring is checked earlier, all aftermath of the disease can be treated earlier, thus the impact is not that severe. Next. Here are the list of references that are used in our presentation. Hence concludes our presentation for this evening. Thank you very much for watching and we hope you have a good day. So long. Goodbye.